All right, guys, you got a single lever Delta kitchen faucet, probably of the older generation, and that's what this video is about. And you got a hose and spray on that faucet, and you hit that sprayer, and either no water comes out, or the water is coming out of both the spout and the spray nozzle, and it's not supposed to do that. Or you hit that sprayer, and you have nothing, no water coming out of it. Well, that's the function of the spray diverter, and that's what this video is about. So stick around. I'm going to show you how to fix that. All right, so before we get into this video, I just want to show you the repair kit I use. Now, I also want to state that uh, when I started making videos, I did do a video on how to repair a single lever faucet. I also did a video on how to repair a two-handled Delta faucet. I'll leave links to those videos either up above or in the description below. This is a repair kit that I carry with me. I've had this kit with me a long time. Now, although uh, Delta has basically changed their single lever faucet design in 2020, there are still hundreds of the old style faucets out there. And when I get a call for one, I find the need to carry this with me. So when I bought this kit, this was originally by Wolverine Brass. Now Wolverine Brass sold only to professional plumbers. Uh, this wasn't available to uh, the general public. Uh, salesmen used to come in once a month and I used to look through their catalog and, and order port parts accordingly. But since then, uh, Wolverine Brass is under the Plum Master, um, how would you say, it? the Plum Master uh, business model. Uh, Plum Master basically, uh, I believe, took them over or took them under their wing. So if you go to plummaster.com, I'm not sure. Uh, I may be uh, wrong on this, but you may be able to, to buy plumbing supplies of professional grade through Plum Master uh, where you weren't always able to do that. Anyway, so we'll open up this kit here, and this kit comes with a nice little, uh, uh, I, I guess you would call that a legend of what parts are in here. So you can repair uh, single lever, two handle faucets, shower body faucets. They come with a variety of different uh, stainless steel balls, a variety of different diverters. Now this kit is just for Delta, just for the Delta product. And if you can see in here, you know, everything fits nice and snugly into this little kit here. And as I use the kit and as I run down on a particular part, I'll just order the replacement parts. But in this particular video today, what we're going to be looking at is the diverter in the Delta single lever faucet. And pretty much this is the, this is the culprit that actually causes the uh, low pressure or no pressure condition in a, in a Delta single lever faucet if it's equipped with a hose and spray. So with that said, I'm going to jump into, uh, we'll jump into the faucet and I'll show you how to take it apart and I'll show you where this is located. Uh, and I just want to say one thing here. If you're going to go out and get parts for Delta or any faucet, Delta, any faucet. I advocate trying to get uh, OEM uh, original parts. OEM. What is OEM? I mean, OEM basically stands for, and if you can see that here, original equipment manufacturer parts. Don't get aftermarket parts. I know a lot of the big home centers, they sell aftermarket parts. A big name, uh, I, I believe, in, in the Home Depot uh, plumbing parts section is um, Danco, D-A-N-C-O. I don't have anything against Danco. It's just that they're aftermarket parts. They aren't made by Delta. And for me, as a professional plumber putting parts in, uh, it pays for me to put top quality parts in because I, I, I don't need to get callbacks because a part failed. So if you're looking for a part with longevity, regardless of who the manufacturer is, I would go out of my way, especially you know with Google today, you can pretty much find original replacement parts Yes, you will pay more for them, but the old story is you pay for what you get. So with that said, let me bring the faucet up on the bench here, and uh, we'll go about the steps on how to remove everything, and I'll show you where that diverter is located, and we'll get into it. All right, so here we're looking at a Delta Model 400 LF-WF. It's an older style single lever faucet, but they are still readily available to buy. Again, like I said, the 2020 versions of the Delta single lever faucets 
are markedly different than these, but there are still plenty of these out there in the field that need to be repaired, and when they do, I'm going to walk you through the scenario. So generally, this particular video is about a low pressure condition in a delta faucet, and what generally causes a low pressure condition in any faucet with a hose and spray is that little diverter inside, which diverts, it switches the water from coming out of the nozzle or the spout to the spray. So you would basically, when you hit this spray head here for the water to come out, what's supposed to happen is that the water should stop coming out of the nozzle. You shouldn't come out of the nozzle anymore. It should completely stop. And then when you release this, it'll continue to come out of the nozzle and stop coming out of the spray. But a lot of times what will happen when that diverter goes bad is you'll experience no pressure. You may hit this and you'll get very little pressure coming out of the spray. Also, instead of the water stop coming out of the spout, it'll continue to come out of the spout. So you'll hit this and you'll have water coming out of the spout as well as the spray. And you don't really have great pressure in either. I mean, in extreme conditions, uh, you can hit this and zero will come out. And sometimes the pressure coming out of the nozzle will be next to nothing. And that all has to do with that diverter that's located inside the faucet, inside the faucet body here. So with that said, let me just walk you through the process that I go through. Now, let me just, let me just zoom in on this a little bit so I can show you now. Naturally, before you do anything, you're going to have to go underneath the sink, turn the water off, hot and cold water, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, so to the right to turn it off, to the left to turn it back on again. If they do not shut, if you find that you shut those valves off and you still have water migrating, you cannot open up this faucet without getting 100% shut off. So if you have to, you might have to go down to the basement and shut the water off. And for those of you in New York City, I did a video on how to go about looking for your water main and shutting the water off, and I will leave uh, a link in the description below to that video. Now, pretty much once you shut the water off, you, I basically just push this handle back, and in here you're going to see there is an Allen key. And Delta has come up with this great little nifty little tool. It's kind of a multi-tool designed for their single lever faucets, and it's got the appropriate sized Allen key on there. And you have to remove the handle. Now, this handle is going to come off easy because this is a brand new faucet. But I can tell you from experience that if this faucet has been there for any amount of time, 20 years, 25 years, when you go to back off this screw, and again, uh, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. So to loosen it to the left, to tighten it to the right. When you go to, go to the left with this thing, sometimes this thing doesn't budge. And sometimes... You know, you'll, you'll find yourself having to put a pair of plier on here, plier or pliers, excuse me, to back it off. And even with that, this will not budge. And I'm here to tell you that there have been times when I have had to drill this Allen screw out. And if you have to drill that Allen screw out, you have to be very careful. You don't want to screw around with the threads inside the handle. If you screw around the threads inside the handle, you could end up putting a new handle on. So just be aware of that. These do not always come out, and you may put your Allen key in there and go to take it off and say, hey, Bob, I can't get the screw out. You know, welcome to my world. Anyway, with that said, so we're going we're gonna to back this off, and we're going to lift the handle off. And what you're going to see here, basically, this is, the, uh, this is the ball assembly that controls the hot and cold water. And we have to take this, this cap nut off here. Now, this... Again, this is a new faucet. This is a little new design. They put these little notches in here so you can grab onto it. The older styles had a, a, like a knurled ring down at the bottom. It was just a knurled ring, and, uh, you know, you would very gingerly with a pair of channel locks counterclockwise try to take that ring off, and sometimes that ring wouldn't come off, and it was a real bear to get off. But nevertheless, if you have these little notches on your faucet, you can use a channel lock without teeth, because you really don't want to screw the chrome up. And you just back that off counterclockwise. Again, this is a, a new faucet, and I have everything set up so I can take this off easily. And we'll get in closer in just a second, but basically you're going to take this off. Now, this is the, uh, the cam and ball assembly that controls the water 
coming out of the spat. So if you had to make a repair and your faucet leaked, couldn't shut it off, it kept dripping, hot or cold, whatever the case may be, this is where you have to go. Now, I'll tell you this, when I repair a Delta single lever faucet, I do everything. I, if they're calling me for a problem with the diverter, once I pull this puppy apart, I'm replacing everything. I replace the ball, I replace the cam, I replace the washers inside, I replace the O-rings. I mean, I'm there. Uh, it, it, it's just cost effective to me as a professional to replace everything. For you as a homeowner, you know, you just fix what's broken. You don't have to go through the, the steps I go through. You know, I'm making a trip there. They're paying me to be there. They're paying me to get a professional job, and I don't want a chance having to get a call back because you were here a couple of weeks ago, you fixed this, now that's leaking. I nipped that in the bud right away, and I rebuild the entire faucet. So with that being said, we have to get this nozzle off. So we're going to take this nozzle off. Again, you may have to struggle with this a little bit, this is the new faucet. And as you can see, here is the diverter we're looking at. And I am going to just move this camera a second, see if I can get you in closer. So hang on. All right, so here we're looking at the diverter, which is, which is located inside the faucet body. That's right here. And this is the culprit. This is what's causing all the issues with the sprayer head and with the water coming out of the spat. Now, you have to... Basically, gingerly, once I get that out, and I'll show you, I have to gingerly go in there and get that out of there. Now, again, some of them have been in there for years and years and years, and they're not that easy to get out, so you may have to play around with it a little bit. But essentially, you can go in there with a kind of pair of channel locks and try to, try to grab the plastic. Or sometimes you can grab this little, uh, this little brass piston here but for the sake of this video, I'm going to see if I can just, uh, I'm going to see if I can get a blade in there and just kind of pry it out. And it should come out easily because this is a new faucet. And we go in here and we want to try to pry that out. And as I can see, it's not going to come out that easy. So let me get my plier here and see if I can grab this. And there we go. So I have this out here. Now let me just push this faucet back so I can give you a better shot of this. So here's that diverter we're looking at. This is the diverter that I just took out of the faucet body. And generally when you remove these, this little rubber that's on here, this rubber remains inside the body. Because this rubber over time gets deteriorated, it gets dried out, and usually what happens is it, it just basically falls off and the pieces get stuck in here. And sometimes you have to flush this out. You have to turn the water on down below to get the little pieces out. But essentially, this is what you're looking to replace. And, and, and it's as simple as, you know, once you get that little piece of rubber out of here, out of the faucet body, and you're confident that there are no pieces in there. And if, I'm, if I feel that there are pieces in there, I'll actually go down below the faucet, turn on the hot and cold water a little bit, and see if I can flush them out. Uh, I'll also take the... Uh, the ball out of the top to flush any possible pieces out of there. But once you, you, you get that out and, um, and you feel you're confident that that's all good, then it's just a matter of putting the diverter back in the body like this. And I always make it a practice before I do put it back in the body to, um, let me just adjust this camera a second here so I can just point this out to you. But I will always make it my business to replace the two O-rings. There's one on top, one on the bottom, before I put the nozzle back. Because what's going to always happen is you're going to get a call back saying that there's a leak coming out uh, between the nozzle. And I don't want that to happen. So I just, I just replaced the diverter, the two O-rings, and then I will reinstall the spout. So... I'm going to put the spat back on again, and then what we're going to do is we're going to um, go in the top, and I'll show you how to, to rebuild the inside of this faucet. I just have to reposition this camera to get a view from the top, and this way uh, you'll have a better shot or understanding of what's going on. All right, so hopefully you can see this clearly, but what we're going to want to do now is remove the ball so we're going to remove the ball and the cam washer. Now, generally, you're, you're, you're able to remove this pretty simply. The ball should come right out. And that's just a matter of pulling straight up 
to get it out of here. And essentially you got the cam washer here. This is the cam washer that holds the ball down. And I'm going to replace all these parts completely. I'm going to do a complete rebuild. This is the ball. The flat of the ball is going to be facing forward when you do replace it and you're going to see this little slit in here and we'll look down inside of this body here there is a little notch sticking out of the inside of the faucet that little notch has to go inside this uh, little slit here because that basically guides the ball and a lot of times that little notch inside there wears away and then the ball loses its place and you'll find yourself searching for the sweet spot on how to get the water to shut off and I actually did a video about that, and I will link that in the cards above as well in the description below. So if you're, if you're searching for that sweet spot to get the water to stop, it probably means that that little guide inside the faucet has worn down. And when that happens, essentially, you need to replace the faucet. So we got that, and inside you're going to see uh, on the right you got the cold, on the left you got the hot, and those are the... Um, those are the uh, seats and springs. I call them seats. Some people call them washers. And essentially, you can go down there, you know, you can pry them out with your uh, needle nose pliers. Or sometimes I'll just, I'll just simply go in there with a, uh, I'm sorry, uh, here is a little Allen key. And those generally will come right out, as you can see here. And we will take the other one out, as you can see here, and these are coming out pretty. Sometimes they get stuck in there because they're in there, especially the hot side. The hot, the hot side, uh, the tendency is for that little rubber seat to dry up, and it gets dried, and you may have to pry it out of there. But they come out, and again, what you also may want to do is crack that water underneath the sink and try to flush out any debris from that... Uh, diverter washer that gets stuck inside the body. So you just want to flush everything out thoroughly. And then it's just a matter of reversing the procedure. And again, I used the original parts in this particular faucet here. These are tapered springs. So they're narrow on top, wide on the bottom. The wider part, excuse me, the wider part goes in the faucet first, followed by the rubber seat and I will put that together here like this now this can be a little tricky and sometimes you have to you know you thread it onto this allen key here put the allen key down inside the, the little sweet spot there and then you can with your fingers you'll feel how to um, you may have to get that rubber seat to sit in that recess now in lieu of doing it the way I'm showing you here which is, you know, the old-fashioned way, essentially. So I just use this. I use this as a guide. So I just, I place that down inside the reset. Well, there you go. See, then that spring went out there backwards. So I'm glad that happened because now you know that everything isn't so sweet. So let's do this again. We have the washer followed by the spring. You want to maybe hold that on there and get this down inside the recess and then just let that fall in there. And it basically falls down in there like that. Now in lieu of what I just showed you, they do make a tool and I'll show you that after I get done. Uh, I, will, uh, I will bring it up after I get done uh, to show you this tool because this tool uh, pretty much I don't think is readily available anymore. I bought this a long time ago. Anyway, so we got the new seats. We got the new springs in there. We're going to take our ball. You went down. Now, let's, let me see if I can get down closer here to show you. And I want to move my light just a touch. Let me see if I can do this. Now, we're doing this live and in color here. But essentially... I don't know if you can see it, but that little, that little guide is right here. The tip of my knife is pointing to this little guide. It's a little brass, it's just a little brass notch that's sticking out the side of the faucet. You'll see it. 
you look on the right side of the faucet, there's a little, little notch sticking out there, right there. And that's where the, um, that's where the um, that little uh, guide in the ball has to sit in order for this thing to work correctly. So you'll take your ball with the flat facing you as such. There's that little, that little slit. You want to get that in there and you want to get that notch there. It just, it just fell in. The notch fell inside of that slit there. And once we get that on there, then we're going to put our cap nut back in, our cap nut slash cam washer back in there, which is here. And this also, I don't know if you can see this, there's a notch here. So that notch has to sit down on the side of the faucet. There's a notch right here. So we will make sure that this ball sits in the notch and then simply match the notch on the cam washer up and that'll set down. And once we get that in there, we're gonna to wanna to put our cap back on again. And again, this is a, new, a newer style faucet. So as you screw this down, it's gonna push down on this cam. And this cam has a O-ring washer in it. So you're going to want to get that down snug and maybe a quarter of a turn with your, with your uh, toothless channel lock pliers. A and you're going to be all set. It's going to set the tension on the ball. Now, in the, in the old days, uh, they didn't, that cam didn't have an O-ring in it. It was a different, different cam. And you had to go in there and they had an adjustment on the top here. They had an additional ring in here with two notches in it. And you would have to adjust. You would have to go in there with this, with this funky little tool with the little notches on it. And you would have to put this tool inside the notches and, and turn the ring until you got the proper tension on the ball. But again, this is a 2020 version of the old, older style faucets. And they, they, they've managed to figure that out and they eliminated this little ring in here. So as you screw this down, it'll give you the proper tension. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, you turn the water back on, hot and cold water back on again, you'll be good to go. We don't want to forget to put the handle back on here. When you put the handle back on here, uh, you know, you'll be good to go. And let me just back this up a second and reposition the camera and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, final thoughts when you're putting everything back together again. Naturally, you're going to want to put that handle on here. And with your Allen key, you're going to go in there and you're going to tighten that up. Uh, what I generally do is when I do this, I'll, I'll actually, believe it or not, I'll, I'll, remove the, uh, I'll remove the Allen screw. And I'll use myself a good quality waterproof silicone lube and lube that screw up so that if it has to come out in the future, that's what I will do. This way I know that this thing is going to come off again. So, and at that stage, you can go down below, turn the water back on again, and you should be good to go. You'll test it out. You'll hit that sprayer. You'll make sure the water from the spout stops when you hit the sprayer. You make sure you have full pressure on both sides, and, and, and pretty much that's it, guys. The one thing I wanted to show you was this is this tool that they had and again I don't know if it's readily available but again if you can see there Plum Master Incorporated I don't know that this is available anymore on their website but this is a tool to set the springs and set the seats and essentially what you can do is you can go down you push this you push this inside the seats and the springs that are sitting inside the faucet and you basically you you you, you, you can you can push it down remove them so you would push down, pull them out. They'll come out. They'll just, they'll just stay on here. And when you want to install them, you pretty much, pretty much all you have to do is you would slide this seat on here like that. And then you would put the spring with the narrow side going into the seat like this and you set that down inside the faucet once you get it inside the recess all you got to do is pull up on the trigger 
and, and basically it leaves it down inside the recess. So if you can find it, I'll see if I can find a link for you guys, but this is called a purge and set tool. It's nothing more than, a, I don't know, looks like a syringe if you ask me. But to get them out, you push in on them and they'll actually, you, you just pull them out. They'll come right out. They'll, they'll go on here because the tip of this is tapered. So as you push it in, it gets snugger and you should be able to push the washer and the spring will come right out. If you want to install them, you just thread them on here. You thread it on here and uh, you just push and release. I also do, did a video on this particular tool again. I'll leave a link to this video in the description below and in the cards up above. This way you have an idea. And guys, with that, I think uh, this video is, uh, is gonna be a wrap. So if you're having a problem with no pressure, low pressure, water coming out of both the spray and coming out of the spat at the same time, you're gonna to wanna to, you're gonna to wanna to look in here to that spray diverter because that's what's causing your low pressure problem. And uh, with that, guys, I'm glad you stopped by. I hope to see you guys in the next one and stay well. And I will see you guys soon. So, folks, that's a pretty common repair on a Delta single lever deck faucet. Now, truth be told, the 2020 versions are different than the older styles, but these older styles are still out there, and that's why I still carry my universal parts for Delta faucets. Anyway, folks, I hope you got some value out of the video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to hit that like button. And keep in mind, there are two videos that are going to pop up here to my right. One of them I chose, one of them YouTube chose. I'm glad you stopped by. I know you have choices when watching plumbing videos. I'm sure glad you hit my channel. Stay well. I hope to be seeing you again soon in my next video. And as always, happy plumbing.